What is the best Google Shopping campaign structure for your shopping ads? I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Let's go. Okay, I get a lot of questions from e-commerce store owners about what the best Google Shopping campaign structure is for their store when they're setting up their Google Shopping ads. What is the best Google Shopping campaign structure? How many ad groups should I create if I have hundreds of products on my store? Should I use multiple campaigns? Should I have multiple ad groups? Honestly, there is no right or wrong structure for your shopping campaigns, but there are clear benefits and negatives for each of the different structures that you can use. The important thing is that you find the winning balance between being able to manage your campaigns effectively and the results that you generate from those campaigns. To be successful with Google Shopping ads, it's important to understand how the Google Shopping campaign structure and ad groups actually works. The structure of your shopping ads can be broken into three levels. You have the campaigns, the product groups, and the products. When you have multiple campaigns set up, you can direct the traffic to each of those campaigns by using negative keywords and prioritization settings. With negative keywords, you can tell Google when you want your ads to show. With prioritization settings, high, medium, and low, you can use this to direct the traffic to different campaigns and adjust your bids accordingly. I always recommend that you split your products up so that you can bid on them individually. Just make sure that you test what works, try out new strategies, and find what works best for your e-commerce store and your campaigns. Now I'm going to walk you through some different structures and when and how I use them for maximum results. Keep in mind that these are just guidelines. Just like I said, test and test and see what works. Never be afraid to test. Okay, let's get into it. This first one is what most people have when they set up their campaigns for the first time and it's not that good. Often it's the first time that you've set up your campaigns and you'll just set them up with Google's recommended settings and you won't change anything. This is having one campaign, one product group, and then in that product group, every single product has the exact same bid. This is not good. Let me show you what it looks like in this video. Okay guys, I'm gonna now show you an example of one campaign, one product group, and all the products with the same bid. They're not split out like they should be. So here we have our campaign. This is just a dummy campaign just to illustrate. And here we have all products and all the products, even though there's only one product in this campaign, but you know, it's not split out. You can't see all the different products here with their bids. Now, how do you know if you're bidding individually? Well, here it says all products. So they're all, all the products are under the same bid. But if you click add subdivision and then go down to item ID, there's only one product in this feed right now, but you'll see all the products here. You're going to click continue to edit bids and you'll then be able to edit the bids of all your products differently. So see how now we have the product here and there's no bid at the top. It's because here we can actually edit the bid individually and then imagine this is a different product. We can then edit that bid individually and you can do it for all your campaigns there. The first case doesn't have this. Okay, so that's something that the first campaign type and I would not recommend having this. It's so easy to edit those bids. You might as well do it. Okay, but when can this sort of campaign be good? Well, if you're just starting out and just wanna get your products onto Google Shopping, this can keep things very simple and you don't complicate things. These campaigns can still get results, but in terms of the fine tuning and optimizing these campaigns for profitability, they need a bit of work. It also stops you from getting all obsessed with the tweaks and optimizations rather than looking at the bigger picture of scaling your e-commerce store. I recommend just get started, start learning and grow your store. Just start with this campaign and then once you get some confidence, start then managing your bids on the product level. Okay, so here's what you can do right now today to improve that campaign we just spoke about. Have one campaign, one ad group, and then bid individually on those products in that ad group. This is my favorite way to start a campaign and it's what I do recommend to all newbies that are getting started in the Google Shopping game. A key point here is that you need to be managing those bids on the product level. Now, I have a whole video where I talk you through the full in-depth strategy for how I manage these bids and I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay guys, just like I talked about earlier in this video, what we wanna do is have the same campaign where we just have one campaign, one product group, but then what we're gonna do is split out based on the actual individual products. So click the little, little drawing sign, little pen sign, and then we're gonna subdivide by item ID, select all your products, if it's a long list, make sure you scroll down so that you're selecting all of them because sometimes it doesn't fully work. So scroll down all the way to the bottom, make sure all the blue boxes are checked and you can check them all at once by pressing this box here. 
You'll see them all here. Fantastic. Continue to edit bids. You can leave that for now. And then boom, you have them all in here and you can go through and edit those bids individually. Really, really important here for bidding on the product level so you can optimize based on how each product performs. Okay, the benefit here, it's very easy to set up and manage those bids. Check out the template in that video that I link in the description on how to manage these bids. You only have to manage one budget. Very easy reporting. It's very easy to manage and add negative keywords. You can manage all your bidding adjustments for things like devices, like mobile desktop, demographics, time of day, location, all in the one campaign. The downside is that you only have one campaign, so all your budget goes into that campaign. Yes, you can still manage those bids on a product level, but say if two or three products are absolutely killing it, well, you're still restricted by that budget for all those other products. It's a great campaign to start with, but say if products are performing really well, I like to pull those products out and put them into a campaign that has an unlimited budget. Also, you need to set the negative keywords for all your products at once. So if you have different categories on your store that are quite different, you can't set those negative keywords on that product level. Okay, now we're getting into some really good stuff here. Let's talk about multi-campaign Google Shopping structures. That is having more than one shopping campaign. These structures start to get a little bit more complicated and I don't recommend touching these until you start getting more conversions in your regular shopping campaigns. I'm talking about 100 plus conversions per month. Why? Well, if you start splitting out your campaigns, suddenly all that data that you're generating is spread out over multiple campaigns. This is a really common mistake. I see this all the time when I audit Google Ads accounts. Someone will read a blog post with advanced Google shopping strategies and hear about campaign structures and then implement this complicated multi-campaign structure in a fresh account and it fails. They just aren't spending enough money to get enough data on all those campaigns for Google to optimize and then show the ads to the right people. It makes no sense. So stick to what works. Start with one campaign, get some conversions into that campaign and then start exploring these multi-campaign structures for your Google Shopping ads. Okay, so who uses these multi-campaign structures? E-commerce store owners or experts that are more advanced in their Google Shopping knowledge e-commerce store owners and experts that have more experience with Google Shopping campaigns. They also have more time and resources to manage multiple campaigns on a regular basis. These things take time and if you're dealing with running a seven-figure e-commerce store, you don't want to get too far into the weeds. I recommend doing this if you have the time, skills, and you actually enjoy doing this so that you can be consistent on managing these campaigns on a regular basis. Okay, so what is it? Multi-campaign structures is when you have multiple campaigns and you use negative keywords and prioritization settings to funnel traffic into different campaigns based on search queries. For example, you can have a campaign for brand keywords, SKUs, and then more generic general search queries. What are the benefits of this? Okay, so it does give you more control over those campaigns and helps you squeeze out those last results in the campaigns. You can now manage bids, not just on the product level, but also based on the search queries that people are using to see your shopping ads. You can also allocate your budget for things like the SKU campaign, the brand campaign, based on what's actually working. Which campaign is most profitable? Let's put our money there. I have a whole video on managing the budgets for your Google Shopping campaigns. I'll put a link in the description to that video. Go check it out. Another benefit is that you can adjust all the campaign settings for those different campaigns. Like you can manage the device bidding adjustments just for the SKU campaign, which is really helpful if mobile is performing better on the SKU campaign. Okay, so what are the disadvantages of running a multi-campaign structure? If you don't have a lot of experience, it's gonna take a lot of time to learn how this works and to manage it on an ongoing basis. This is time that you could be spending building your e-commerce store in much more effective ways. It also makes reporting a bit more difficult because you're dealing with multiple campaigns and seeing where the results are. Let me jump into my computer and show you how to set these up. Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. Now we're going to set up the multi-campaign structure for our Google Shopping campaigns in our Google Ads account. So you'll see here I'm in this Google Ads account and we have three campaigns set up. So we have generic, SKU, and brand. All shopping campaigns, I've basically just cloned the campaign, made it into three different campaigns. And what we're doing here is we're using this structure to basically filter the search queries into a campaign depending on uh, what people search for. It, it's a way that with shopping campaigns, you can have a bit more control over keywords, which you don't usually have keywords in shopping campaigns. But basically, instead of choosing keywords, you choose negative keywords and then 
and make sure that you set them differently on each campaign so that someone searches for something, Google will check, okay, which campaign does it fit into? Okay, let's show it for this one here. And then, then you can change the bids for those campaigns differently. So you'll have different bidding for the campaigns um, depending on which campaign it is. So we have this generic campaign here. This is the, the, basically the catch-all that gets all the generic search terms. So if I'm selling my surfboards and there are Superfish S7 surfboards, it's gonna have negative keywords. It's I'll, I'll walk back a bit. So basically this, this campaign here, we wanna pick up all like the related terms like buy surfboards online. It's a, it's a, it's a high intent keyword, but it's still generic. It's not talking about the brand. It's not talking about um, the actual SKU, like Superfish S7. It's not talking about the actual brand. It's, it's, it's talking like more gen generic terms like surfboard online, buy new surfboard, buy surfboard Australia, buy surfboard California. You know, it, it's generic terms like that. And so what we wanna do is we want the Google to, to check this campaign first. So we're gonna set the priority in this one for high and we're gonna set our bids for low and we're gonna put negative keywords in there for SKUs, brands, and then any universal keywords. So any keywords that you would have in any campaign anyway, anyway like how or, or what, which is more research terms, you would put that in this one here. Next, uh, we want people, we want Google to check the brand. So this one, we would have the same universal keywords, but we would only have the SKUs as the extra, extra negative keyword. Because the brand campaign, we don't want to have negative keywords in there for the brand. It's going to be SKUs and universal um, universal negative keywords. And the bid for this one is going to be medium. So, so and the priority is going to be medium. So basically, if... Um, this one is going to filter out so there's no brands can be shown here, but brands can then be shown here. So that's when this one um, will actually show. So that's that's how it works like that. And then with the SKU campaign, that's then going to have high bids, low priority. So basically, if a search query doesn't doesn't trigger our ads in generic or brand, it's going to do it in, in the SKU campaign. So we're going to have low priority, high bids, and then the negative keywords are going to be universal keywords. So they're the ones that apply to all campaigns. So it has low, low, low priority. So these ones will catch these two and the top and bottom will catch the keywords. I'll catch the search queries for pretty much all the terms except for the SKUs. And then we want this one to show the SKUs and we want to bid much higher on those SKUs because the people directly looking for this specific product, you know, they've got a much higher chance of converting. So we want to do that. So I'll show you what it looks like in the actual campaign settings. So if I go into the settings, uh, let me go down to the settings down here. You'll see that campaign priority is set to high. So that's going to show these ones first. Um, so that's how, how that works. If I go into my negative keywords, see this one here has... Um, the boogie board, these are generic terms like how boogie board because it's a surfboard. We don't want to show for that. So the, these terms here are shown for all my campaigns. They're going to have these same terms. But then look, I've got my branding terms here and then I've got a SKU uh, terms down here. So it, it, it's only going to show four search queries that are much more generic. Okay. And then if I go into my, my products, you'll see here that I am bidding... One dollar, so that's going to be my lowest lower bid. You know, of course, once I start getting re uh, results and data, I'm going to adjust this based on performance. But then the next one I'm going to go to is check out the brand. Same thing. Let's go check out the settings. So medium campaign priority, great. Let's go to negative keywords. Okay, so we have the SKU and the universal negatives, but of course we don't have the brand in here because it's a brand campaign, so we actually want to show for branding. And then let me go to the bids. And then bidding is $1.50. So that's a medium bid. So that's a bit higher than the generic campaign, but it's probably going to be lower than the SKU. So let's go to the SKU now. Yep, so $2 for that, but I'll come back to that. So in the settings, this should be set to low. Fantastic. Negative keywords, only the generic keywords. Only, not even generic, only the universal negative keywords here. So that's great. Awesome. And then if I go, like I said, back to the bids, now I've got, uh, let me jump into the ad group, sorry. So, because we're bidding on the product level, so that's gonna take precedence. So yep, $2, so we're bidding much more for those keywords. So you, there you go, guys. That's how you set up those, the bidding and the settings and the negative keywords and set up the multi-campaign structure. Throughout this video, there will have been a bit of display here on the left showing you the details of <clears throat> these these structures and, and, and the settings for each one. So it's really easy so you don't have to go through and watch my screen. It'll be there here, it'll be over here on the, this way, 
I can't do it. <laughs> this way on the screen and go check that out. After this, I'm gonna now get into a different multi-campaign structure that's based on performance of products. So let's do it. Hey guys, now we're gonna go through a different multi-campaign structure where you're actually pulling out winning products and putting them into a different campaign. Okay, so this does require you to have been running your ads for some time, so you do have some conversion data there, but once you know what products are really working, you can then put them into their own campaign and give them their own budget. Okay, so I have a campaign here, it's a generic campaign. Let's go take a look at the performance of these products. So here, good thing was we're bidding on the product level depending on performance. And here I'm gonna check out, okay, conversion value. So this one here has $11,000 in conversion value, which is really, really awesome. It's the, the most of the campaign, but it isn't the, the majority of the campaign, but it's like, it's quite a high amount. And the return on ad spend is 8.68. So conversion value divided by cost, that's return on ad spend. That's 8.68, which is pretty good. Um, it really depends on the profit margin and the goal ROAS of this product and this account, but this product in particular. If that was performing really well, like really profitably, I need to know the profit margin, but if it was performing really well, then I would then take that and put it into its own campaign. You'll see here that the next product has 14.85. That's insane. Like that ROAS with 5K in sales. So what that says, hey, there's a lot of sales there. We could potentially take this product pull it out, put it into its own campaign as well, and then just give it unlimited budget. It's just killing it there. And the worst thing is you don't want products like these ones down here, you know, you don't want to spend a lot of money on this one here and it's got a ROAS of 2.57. Like, so those sort of products there, the variation here is so much that the, the, the reason why this, this strategy works, you get these products and you go, okay, create a new campaign, you can clone this campaign, exclude the product from the original campaign, and then have it just only in that new campaign. And then that allows you to then dedicate specific budgets towards winning and profitable products. Okay, so why do you do this? Well, if you have all your products in the one campaign, the products are gonna perform differently. They have different you know, pro average profit per, per conversion, different profit margins, different order values. Everything is gonna be really different and some products will also perform much worse than others. Just like that one there, for example, there's one for three rowers, 3.4, 2.5. No, this one hasn't even got any conversions yet, this, this one down here. It's only got one click though, but what you can do is go, okay, well, because those other ones are in the campaign, if I increase the budget, it's also gonna give budget to those ones. I only want to give that budget to the, the products that are performing really well. So that's why you can pull out those products into a new campaign and then give them a dedicated budget there. In that original campaign, you exclude that product from the original campaign because you don't want to keep showing it in two different campaigns. And then you keep tweaking and improving those other products there, the product feed, the bidding, you improve the negative keywords until you can get it to a really profitable point. And then you can pull them out and put them in their own campaign. So yeah, so that's how you do the multi-campaign uh, structure for profitable products. I hope that helped. Okay, that's today's video on the best Google Shopping campaign structures. If you have any questions at all about what I've spoken about today, please leave a comment below. I read and answer all the comments on my channel. And if this video was useful for you, please hit the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube Sam is making good stuff out there for his audience. If you wanna see more videos just like this one, tutorials, case study videos, everything about growing your e-commerce store, check out my channels. I have a lot of playlists on different topics that help you with all areas of your e-com store. Consider subscribing to get more and more tutorials and tips on growing your store. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.